Hello everybody and welcome to this presentation on how thicker insulating glass units enable a new path to passive house. My name is Greg Clarahan. I'm the founder and president of Light Zone Glass Inc. And this is an extended version of the presentation I gave on May 10th, 2023 to the Passive House Canada Conference in Hamilton. If you're interested in energy efficient buildings in net zero and passive house design, then I think you might be surprised at what you learned from this presentation. In this presentation, you will learn how new thicker insulating glass units make possible very high window insulating values. Light zone insulating glass will be used as an example throughout. The presentation will show you how higher performing thicker light zone IGUs can achieve the passive house low energy requirements for the cold climate zone with both high solar heat gain IGUs or with low solar heat gain IGUs when the objective is to minimize energy requirements year round without the cost to control overheating in the summer. The presentation addresses the need for thicker IGUs to be engineered for a long life to be truly sustainable. Light zone thicker IGUs are designed to achieve a lifespan greater than 60 years and I'll explain how we accomplish that. The presentation will show you how thicker IGUs can be installed on a wall without traditional frames to reduce costs and to reduce thermal transmission while achieving an attractive minimalistic aesthetic. To start, we first need to understand the difference between a window versus the center of glass insulating values. So this diagram shows you an example of a conventional triple pane window. Here we see a conventional insulating glass unit. It's a triple pane, three lights of glass set into a wood window frame set into a wall. The window insulating values depend on the thermal transmission to the insulating glass unit, or what we call the center of glass insulating value, through the spacer and through the frame and most importantly around the insulating glass unit glaze into that frame. It's this area here that's the problem. This is what we call the edge of glass where the insulating glass unit joins with the frame. We call this the critical insulation zone. The thin critical insulation zone of conventional windows is their weakest link in achieving better insulating values. The problem is an insulating glass unit that's only one inch or perhaps one and three quarter inches thick just does not have an adequate critical insulation zone to achieve the higher window insulating values that we need today. This bar chart of window insulating values will help illustrate the problem. If we look at item number three, what we have is a generic wood framed window using a one and three quarter inch triple pane insulating glass unit that has half inch spacing between the glass lights. It uses no low E coats and just uses air for its infill. And it achieves an insulating value of R3 center of glass represented by this light orange bar. It achieves an overall window insulating value of also about R3 represented by this darker orange bar which means that the frame also achieves R3. Now we can increase the insulating value of this window by adding low emissivity coatings to the glass or by adding a low conductive gas. So if we look at item number six, we have the same generic wood framed window with a one and three quarter inch triple pane insulating glass unit, but this time we have two low E coats and we have argon instead of air for its infill. Now, it, that unit achieves a center of glass insulating value of about R8, but something less than R7 for an overall window insulating value. That's because the frame is still only R3. That means that this much higher performing triple pane window with two Lowy coats and argon has the same thermal losses at its edge, at its frame, as this low performing triple pane window. 
And by the way, that triple pane window will only achieve that value for as long as the argon stays in the glass unit. When the argon escapes, it'll fall back to item number five here, which overall will achieve just a little bit better than R5 compared to something less than R7. Now, turning to our purple bars, our light purple and dark purple bars, what we have is three other theoretical examples of uh, windows using one and three quarter inch glass units in the same generic wood frame, except this time we've modeled it with three suspended films and four Lowy coats and either argon, krypton, or xenon for its infill. Now, if we look at uh, the increasing insulating values, that gets pretty dramatic, uh, but the overall average window values uh, do not improve as quickly as the center glass values. That's because the overall window insulating value is limited by the fact that it's still using an R3 frame and still has the same thermal losses at the edge as this very poor R3 window. So we can, uh, we can come up with R20 center of glass that the overall window value pretty much tops out at around something less than R12 because it has the same poor performance at its edge, only R3. Here's a simulated infrared image of the highest performing theoretical window that I showed you in the previous slide, the one that gets R20 center of glass. We have minus 18 Celsius outside, plus 21 Celsius inside, and only one and three quarter inches separating those two temperatures. There just isn't room in this area of the window for the amount of insulation we need to achieve the thermal performance we're looking for, resulting in very high thermal losses through the thin critical insulation zone. Light zone embraces the need for a thick critical insulation zone and manufactures thicker, higher performing insulating glass. In this example, we have a glass unit that is 4.4 inches thick and achieves R17 center glass and R14 for an overall window because there is more room for more insulation in this area of the window, resulting in very low thermal losses through the thick critical insulation zone. This bar chart compares the insulating values that light zone can achieve in the blue bars to what was shown in the previous chart for conventional windows. By adding internal layers and by adding low E coats in a thicker assembly, we can achieve very high window insulating values. In fact, all the way up to R22 center of glass and an overall window insulating value as high as R19. This data sheet provides the performance ranges for Light Zone's 11 different product groups. These product groups are distinguished by the number of layers they have, two of glass, and between one and eight suspended films, and by the gap sizes between those layers and the overall glass unit thicknesses, which range between one and three quarter inches to 7.56 inches thick. We then add low emissivity coats to the glass or to the films to reach a wide range of glass unit performance values. So this determines our minimum, maximum insulation values, shading coefficients, solar heat gain coefficients, and visible light transmission, as well as overall window insulating values. Turning to our highest performing product group, which is line item number 11, our L1079 product group, which has eight suspended films. Uh, it's 7.56 inches thick. It can achieve nearly R22 center of glass. That's a U value as low as 0.046 center of glass. And an overall window insulating value as high as nearly R19 that's a U-value as low as 0 0.053 using the NFRC environmental conditions, and these, of course, are in imperial units. Now, the last four product groups listed on this data sheet 
are not yet in commercial production because we have not yet invested in the tooling required to manufacture these very high performance IGUs. So the highest performing product group currently being manufactured is the L0679 product group, which has four suspended films, is 4.38 inches thick. It can achieve up to R17.2, that's a U value as low as 0 0.058, and an overall window insulating value, value that's nearly R14 with a U value as low as 0 0.072. Now it can achieve this very high insulating value while also having a solar heat gain coefficient as low as 0.15 with clear glass to minimize your energy requirements for both heating and for cooling. Now we sell a lot of our highest performing product group, but we also sell many of our other products as well. For example, our 479 glass unit has two suspended films, it can achieve an insulating value over R11 center of glass, which is pretty awesome. Um, we also sell a lot of our 579 uh, product group, which has three suspended films, which can achieve over R15 center of glass, which is uh, incredible. A uh, pretty big lift between a two film product and a three film product. It's just the way the physics works out. So we can provide a wide range of performance values depending on the framing systems uh, that are available for your project. There'll be, we'll talk more about the framing systems uh, later on in the presentation, but we can bring incredible value to your project. This data sheet is the same as what we just looked at, except it provides the metric values, still using the NFRC environmental conditions. Quickly looking at line item number seven for our L0679 uh, product group, uh, we can achieve an insulating value as high as RSI 3.04 center of glass and a U value center of glass as low as 0 0.329. Now, if we do the same calculations using the passive house cold climate environmental conditions, that U value is even lower it comes out to be just a little bit more than 0.3, so pretty awesome. By the way, we have Passive House certified insulating glass units for the Arctic and cold climate zones. So if you're looking for high solar heat gain uh, insulating glass, uh, we'll be talking about that more uh, later on in the presentation. This is a photograph of the L0499 glass unit it has two suspended films. It achieves nearly R11 center of glass and a U-value center of glass of 0 0.092. We do get a lot of comments on how attractive the light zone glass unit is. Uh, we can achieve some very tight joinery and where the films penetrate through the spacer, the line you see is very elegant. The color throughout the spacer is always very true and even and the spacer color comes in both white and black. This is a photograph of our L0679 glass unit with four suspended films. And here's a photograph of our prototype of our L1079 glass unit with eight suspended films. This is the one that gets up to R22 center of glass. Now this uh, particular sample is 21 inches by 21 inches uh, by seven and a half inches deep. So this is uh, a, a new paradigm in thinking about how a glass unit looks and works. So here we see an example of a very high performing wall. It's getting up to R63. And then they're putting low, it looks like pretty low performing windows, creating a thermal hole here, even though we have all the space to use a thicker window, a thicker glass unit. So we think it makes a lot of sense to have high performing, thick insulating glass units in very thick walls of energy efficient buildings instead of creating these thermal holes by using low performing 
thin IGUs. Now let's look at the impact of a thicker, higher performing insulating glass unit on the cost and design of your passive house project. So in this example, we will be analyzing a 10 meter by three meter or 30 square meter wall area, which includes 3.75 square meters of window. So that window will account for 12 and percent of the total wall area. And we will assume that the window is a pretty good insulation value, a metric U value of 0 0.8 or an imperial R value of 7.1. And we'll assume that the insulated wall area has an effective insulation value of R56. So when it's minus 15 Celsius outside, uh, this wall will have a heat flow of 198.3 watts through the total wall which is the budget we will assume for this particular analysis. Now, interestingly, the heat flow through the window accounts for 53% of the total energy flow through that wall, when it's only 12.5% of that wall. Now, if we use thicker, higher performing insulating glass to double the window insulating value to R14.2, that will result in a 26% reduction in the heat loss through the total wall when it's minus 15 degrees Celsius outside, even though the window is only 12.5% of the wall area. This has pretty significant cost savings potential for long-term uh, reductions in your energy uh, consumption as well as reductions in peak energy charges, which can be pretty significant in some jurisdictions, and a possibility of uh, capital cost savings in both your heating and cooling systems. Let's look at another scenario. Let's assume we're okay with the energy budget of 198.3 watts of heat flow through the total wall when it's minus 15 degrees outside. Uh, it turns out that if we continue to use our R14.2 thicker, higher performing uh, insulating glass units, that we can reduce the insulating value of the wall by 33% from R56 to R37 and still have a small reduction from our energy budget. So that's pretty remarkable. We have uh, by doubling the insulating value of 12.5% of the wall, the window area, we can have a 33% reduction in the wall insulating value. So obviously the uh, potential benefits uh, could be pretty significant in reduced cost of the insulating wall, that's obvious, but also by maybe using a thinner wall to reclaim valuable interior or perhaps site space. Now let's look at a, another scenario. Let's assume that there's a desire to have more windows and we double the amount of window in this wall area. So now it's 25% of the total wall area. What happens? Well, using the R7.1 windows, doubling the wall, the window area in that wall will result in a very nasty uh, uh, energy penalty. The heat loss through that total wall will increase by 46% when it's minus 15 degrees outside. Now, because you have more window, you will have more solar gain. So the big question is, can additional solar gains offset this heat loss? that would have to be determined. Now, if we double the amount of window area in the wall, but do so using thicker, higher performing insulating glass to achieve window insulating values of R14.2, what we find is we still have uh, an energy savings of 7% less than our uh, energy budget of 198.3 watts when it's 15 below outside. So that's quite incredible. What it means is if we uh, double the window insulating values, we can have twice the amount of windows with no heat loss penalty, uh, twice the amount of solar gain. We can have better daylighting. 
we can have more views and better connection to the outside. So I would argue a much better design. Now to achieve a more sustainable built environment, very high R value windows need to have a lifespan similar to the life of a building using them. We want to reduce life cycle costs, reduce waste, and of course to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Now the problem is conventional higher performing insulating glass units have relatively short lives, especially triple pane glass units. Now light zone has overcome the technical limitations of conventional IGs to achieve a 60 year lifespan. To appreciate light zones construction, we first need to do a short review as to why conventional glass units fail. Conventional glass units eventually become fogged because of water vapor ingress through the edge seal and because of edge seal mechanical failures due to stress caused by changes in pressure and temperature. And we're going to review both of these causes. This diagram shows the construction of a dual seal, double pane insulating glass unit. And what we see here are two panes of glass separated by an aluminum spacer that has desiccant inside that spacer. And the spacer is bonded to the glass using a primary seal, which is a gas barrier sealant such as polyisobutylene. And then there's a secondary seal using a structural sealant such as silicone or polysulfide or polyurethane or uh, some other sealant. All the sealants used in constructing insulating glass units have a certain water vapor transmission rate, which means that over the life of the glass unit, there's a constant migration of water through the sealants into the glass unit. And initially that water vapor will be absorbed by the desiccant. The amount of water vapor and how rapidly that water vapor moves into the glass unit will depend on the particular sealant's water vapor transmission rate and on the environmental conditions the glass unit is in. A more humid environment will result in a higher water vapor migration into the glass unit. The water vapor entering the unit will eventually saturate the desiccant within the spacer the humidity within the unit will then rise and eventually condensation will form on the glass and you will have a fogged unit. Changing temperatures cause glass unit materials to expand and contract at different rates which puts stress on edge seals and can cause a mechanical seal failure. So for example if your spacer is made out of aluminum Aluminum has a much greater expansion and contraction rate compared to float glass, which can cause differential movement with changing temperatures, which can contribute to a seal failure. Changing temperatures cause the air or gas within the glass unit to expand and contract, which also puts stress on the edge seal. For example, on a hot day, the air inside the glass unit will expand, causing this bulging, which puts stress on the edge seal. And when it's cold outside, you can have a decrease in pressure within the glass unit, uh, again, putting stress on the edge seal. And with thousands of expansion and contraction cycles with changing temperatures over the life of the sealed unit, you eventually will have a catastrophic seal failure. Uh, water will migrate into the unit and you will have a fogged unit. Conventional insulating glass units reflect distorted images due to glass bulges caused by these pressure differences. So on large glass walls, you can easily observe this sort of oil canning effect that you see here. And sometimes these bulges can be really extreme, as you see in this photo, which tells you that these glass units have tremendous stress on their edge seals. 
These stresses will be much greater for triple pane glass units compared to double pane glass units. If for illustration purposes we assume the glass is perfectly flexible, it is not, the bulge at the center will be five times greater for triple pane glass units compared to double pane glass units when the IGU becomes hot from the sun. This is because triple pane insulating glass has a greater volume of air within the glass unit which will expand more. But also triple pane achieves a higher performance which causes the internal temperature to be higher which in turn will cause a greater expansion of the air within the unit. Now this problem is even more severe for quad pane glass units compared to triple pane glass units. When you have a bulged uh, sealed unit as shown in this diagram, you can end up with a compromised primary seal, which will result in more rapid water vapor migration into the glass unit. Compromised primary seals can also result in a more rapid loss of argon from the glass unit. Light zone has been engineered to overcome the technical limitations of conventional IGUs to achieve a 60 year lifespan, similar to the life of a building. Light zone insulating glass units have been designed to have a very long life. All its materials are stable and durable. All the materials it uses have a similar coefficient of linear thermal expansion. The film suspension system it uses applies almost no stress to the film. The unit only uses air instead of trying to entrap a low conductive gas such as argon, krypton, or xenon. And therefore the unit has no concerns with declining performance or with decompression problems as argon, krypton, or xenon escape from the glass unit over its life. The glass unit is pressure equalized to minimize stresses on the edge seals. And the backbone of the glass unit construction is a fiberglass spacer, which is exceedingly strong and highly insulating. And the structural connections between the glass lights and the fiberglass spacer is much stronger than what you would have with a conventional glass unit. And those connections to the glass lights are very flexible. There are always only two edge seals to establish and maintain, unlike triple pane, which will have four edge seals or a quad pane unit which has six edge seals. Every time you add an edge seal, you increase the risk of a seal failure. And the edge of the glass unit is wrapped in a stainless steel foil, which is impermeable to water vapor, which means that it stops all water vapor transmission into the unit through the unit's edge seal. These are the reasons why light zone is expected to have a lifespan of more than 60 years. This diagram gives you an overview of the construction of a light zone L0679 insulating glass unit. We have two lights of glass and between those panes of glass we have in this version of light zone four suspended PET films. Those are polyester films which creates five air filled internal cavities and those films are suspended in a proprietary film suspension system contained within a proprietary fiberglass spacer. In that spacer, we also have a proprietary pressure equalization conduit with desiccant. And then we have a back seal, a front seal, and we have a stainless steel foil wrap around the entire edge of the glass unit. The fiberglass spacer has a coefficient of linear thermal expansion very comparable to glass. This is extremely important when you're manufacturing a thicker glass unit such as light zone. This is an example of a fiberglass spacer that is used for our L0499 glass unit which allows for the suspension of two films in these channels with the slits on top. One here, a second one here. Here we see a film that has been slid into this channel. What is hidden is the proprietary mechanism that we use for suspending the films. That mechanism consists 
of uh, film bars attached to the film and then we use leaf springs to bias those film bars away from the top of the channel um, uh, to suspend the films and keep the films taut uh, all around the perimeter of the glass unit. Now as the films expand and contract the film bars are allowed to move up and down in this channel so really the films float within the spacer of the glass unit under very very low stress. Um, the films themselves have an expected life of more than a century. This diagram is a cross section of a light zone L0679 glass unit with four suspended films and uh, it shows the uh, silicone rubber that's applied to the top of the fiberglass spacer uh, which is in green. Uh, the silicone rubber doesn't react to UV light and so it protects the, the uh, spacer from any possible damage from UV light. It also provides a nice even uh, color throughout the inside of the glass unit. Also shown here are the uh, sections through the leaf springs and the film bars. Uh, the purple is represents the pressure equalization conduit with desiccant and there's one of these for every internal cavity within the glass unit. Um, the light green represents just space, the uh, cavity within the frame, and that provides the travel room for the film bars to move up and down with the expansion and contraction of the film with changing temperatures. Now zooming in on the uh, corner of the diagram where the glass is attached to the fiberglass uh, we can see here the uh, silicone rubber in the top of the fiberglass we can see uh, the glass light which is attached to the fiberglass first with this VHB tape that's very high bond tape it's a 3M acrylic foam tape which is uh, a structural tape that has decades of experience in many industries uh, it's uh, incredibly strong and flexible uh, also we have a structural silicone that we use in addition to the VHB tape to uh, make the structural connection between the glass and the fiberglass at the bottom um, we see the stainless steel foil wrap and right where the stainless steel foil meets the glass we protect that joint with a bead of polyurethane sealant. So now the structural connection um, be, between the VHB tape and the structural silicone we can see is 22.5 millimeters. Now that connection is about four times what is typical for conventional insulating glass units. The air pressure within the light zone glass unit is equalized to the outside atmospheric pressure. All the internal cavities within the glass unit are also pressure equalized with each other. Water vapor cannot enter the unit using internationally patented technology. This means the glass will not deflect due to internal pressures and the stress on the edge seal will remain very low. So this is an important reason why light zone is a life of more than 60 years. By the way, this pressure equalization system requires no special handling, servicing, or maintenance procedures during the life of the glass unit. So these photos are of a light zone L0579 glass unit with three suspended films and four air cavities. What you can see here is a stainless steel foil wrap around the edge of the glass unit. And also we can see the stainless steel breather tube in its connection uh, through the edge of the glass into the pressure equalization conduit. So having this pressure equalization system enables light zone to make very thick, higher performing insulating glass. And I can't stress enough the importance of, of having uh, this technology uh, you know, for example, if we take our L0679 glass unit that's 4.4 inches thick and take a unit that's, say, 5 feet by 8 feet uh, in size, 
uh, between a cool evening and a warm or hot daytime high, you could have as much as 40 or 50 liters of air uh, travel in and out of that glass unit over the course of that temperature swing. And if you didn't pressure equalize it, the internal pressures would be enormous. You would either break the glass or very quickly break the edge seal. That's why the, uh, this pressure equalization technology that we own uh, and is a, is a, a key uh, technological advancement that uh, allows us to make these thicker glass units. So a uh, light zone glass unit with a pressure equalization system, of course, will appear flat with understarted reflections, meaning the sealed units are under uh, very low stress, uh, even though the edge seal, as we explained, uh, is uh, far stronger and superior to a uh, conventional glass unit. So the pressure equalization uh, system allows the IGUs to be made much thicker and to have a very long life. Because the weight of the suspended PET films is negligible compared to glass, light zone glass units weigh less than triple pane IGUs, which have 50% more glass. For example, triple pane IGUs weigh about 30% more than light zone L0679 glass units, which are 4.4 inches thick. The thickness of a light zone insulating glass unit naturally gives it better sound insulation. In fact, most light zone glass units will have a sound transmission class greater than 40. And uh, it's fairly easy for a light zone IGU to achieve an STC of 50. Many failed IGUs in these two Edmonton residential towers have been replaced with light zone. This is the first light zone insulating glass unit installed uh, back in 2015. With light zone glass units, we can provide you large glass units without the usual concerns of premature seal failures that often conventional insulating glass units will be facing, especially triple pane glass units that are under more stress than double pane glass units, and especially if those glass units are on the south side of a building, which uh, uh, puts those units under a lot more thermal stress. Uh, so light zone can uh, give you large windows with uh, views that are not impeded by additional framing and without the, the additional cost and the additional thermal transmission that comes with that framing. Uh, the largest glass unit sizes that light zone can provide are 6 feet 3 inches by 10 feet. All the insulating glass units in this residential tower that you can see in this photograph have been replaced with light zone. By replacing all the glass units in this curtain wall with light zone insulating glass, the port theater in Nanaimo, BC was able to reduce their energy losses through the glass for both heating and cooling by approximately 40 percent. New fiberglass windows using light zone insulating glass units replace the end of life windows in this Edmonton home. So this is an example of a fiberglass fixed window that's using a light zone L0679 glass unit that has four suspended films and is 4.4 inches thick. Here we see an example of a fiberglass combination window that's using a light zone L0579 glass unit with three suspended films on the left hand side and in the operable window on the right hand side uh, it is using a light zone L0379 glass unit with just one suspended film. These are wood 
tilt and turn operable windows manufactured by Fenster Windows and Doors located in Duncan, BC on Vancouver Island. Uh, these uh, uh, windows use light zone L0479 glass units that's two suspended films and can achieve over R11 center of glass. Currently there are about a dozen window and door manufacturing companies that can incorporate thicker higher performing light zone insulating glass within their framing systems for fixed windows for operable windows and in some cases in uh, lift and slide doors and in man doors um, the uh, these systems are in addition to fiberglass and wood uh, there are thermally broken aluminum systems and upvc uh, uh, framing systems. There is more and more window manufacturing companies coming on board to uh, make products available using thicker, higher performing and longer lived light zone insulating glass. We have many of our customers embracing this light zone frame this installation uh, approach to getting a high performance thicker light zone glass unit into their building project. So what this is about is setting a light zone glass unit directly into the wall without a window frame following a proper installation detail. Um, why would you do this? Because by eliminating the window frame we will reduce thermal transmission and we will reduce materials and obviously reduce costs and reduce all the uh, carbon footprint associated with those materials. And if you execute this detail that we, we show here properly, we actually end up, we believe, with a better installation detail to reduce the risk of air and water infiltration um, through the uh, window. And we can achieve a very clean sight line with a minimalistic aesthetic by because we can maximize the daylight opening for the window opening in your wall. So here is a new home on Cortez Island in British Columbia that use this frameless fixed window installation detail for uh, light zone glass units. These may look like uh, regular windows, but they aren't. What we see here are just uh, casings to enclose a uh, frameless installation uh, detail that was used. This is another example of a home in Nelson, BC that used light zone for their fixed windows and installed them using the frameless installation detail. This is a home in Ontario that used light zone in their fixed windows, again using the frameless uh, installation detail. And notice here, this is a 4.4 inch thick insulating glass unit set into this very thick, highly insulated wall and using this minimalistic approach to the design, I, I think it ended up being very attractive. Uh, and this uh, home is so energy efficient, I bet you they're heating it with a couple of candles and maybe some body, body heat and that's about it. This is an interesting project in Ontario that has two walls of floor to ceiling light zone insulating glass installed using a frameless installation detail where it is captured at the bottom with a simple angle and at the top with a simple angle. And the uh, light zone glass units adjacent to each other are uh, simply joined with a structural silicone joint. And there's no framing system at the vertical. The uh, mechanical engineers have confirmed that the energy usage for this home will be less than 15 kilowatt hours per square meter for both the heating and for the cooling, which means this home will achieve the low energy requirements uh, of passive house. The other interesting thing is the light zone frame installation approach was the lowest cost alternative compared to the quotes this builder received for other high-end frame window systems that it was being compared against. This is the same project in Ontario, but an inside view of the opposite glass wall. 
Notice again that there is no framing uh, support at these vertical joints. This project is just relying on the incredible strength of the fiberglass spacer, which is the backbone of the light zone insulating glass construction. And that is not a problem for uh, the wind load requirements of projects like this. Here's the detail at the vertical joints that was used at that home in Ontario. This is a plan view, so we're looking down on two glass units uh, adjacent to each other where there's some insulation put in between and backer rods placed in and then structural silicone is used to uh, join the two glass units together. Uh, you could put some face plates on, that's optional to uh, maybe protect the joint further and maybe improve the aesthetics on the front and on the back. The Light Zone L0679PH Arctic Insulating Glass Unit has been certified by the Passive House Institute in Germany for both the Arctic climate zone and the cold climate zone. This is the only insulating glass unit being manufactured in North America that's been certified by the Passive House Institute. It achieves a U-value center of glass of 0.40 watts per meter squared Kelvin. It achieves a solar gain of 0.42 which gives it a efficiency of 105%. So that's a passive host efficiency class of PHA with a visible light transmission of nearly 40%. Now, what is different about this glass unit is that it uses three mil glass instead of suspended films as the inner layers of the glass unit. Uh, we can easily do this with our fiberglass spacer still only having uh, two seals and the construction stays just the same, um, but using three mil glass instead of the suspended films. And we use the three mil glass because we can get access to higher performing low emissivity coatings that provide the high solar heat gain that we need to achieve the passive house performance values that uh, we have. If you go to our website, you can view and download this certificate that was issued by the Passive House Institute for the Light Zone PH Arctic Insulating Glass Unit. The Light Zone L0679 PH Frameless Fixed Window has also been certified by the Passive House Institute in Germany for the cold climate zone. Now, the Passive House Institute considers the frame to be what is circled in red on this diagram, which includes the exterior glass stop and the interior glass stop, that which encapsulates this L0679 glass unit. Now the exterior glass stop is a fiber glass angle turned in, and the interior glass stop is a fiber glass tube filled with polystyrene insulation. And these glass stops will be provided by light zone when we uh, sell a fixed window. And this fixed window achieves some pretty good performance values. The frame U value is equal to 0 0.340 watts per meter squared Kelvin, and the psi glazing edge value is 0 0.034 watts per meter Kelvin. And the frame width is only 33 millimeters. So this 33 millimeters is uh, uh, pretty small compared to typical uh, uh, Passive House certified frames, which uh, usually would have a frame width that is, say, about two and a half times greater than that. And so we can achieve a window overall U value uh, uh, of 0.491 for the Passive House uh, standard size of 1.23 meters times 1.48 meters, and that's watts per meter squared Kelvin. But as we increase the size of this fixed window, we can get the overall window U value as low as 0 0.454. And that's for a window that's 1.83 meters by 3.05 meters. If you go to the Light Zone website, you can view and download this certificate issued by the Passive House Institute for the light zone PH frameless fixed window, 
which achieves the highest passive efficiency class of PHA plus for the cold climate zone. The certificate provides validated installation details for three different types of wall constructions and how to set a light zone pH frameless fixed window into each of those walls and achieve the overall window installed values required. This data sheet is available to view and download on our website. What it provides is the performance values for five different light zone glass unit options when installed in the light zone pH frameless fixed window. Option number one is for the Passive House certified uh, light zone glass unit that we reviewed earlier in the presentation uh, using three millimeter glass as the in internal layers in the glass unit versus suspended films, which achieve some pretty uh, awesome performance values, including an overall window U value as low as 0 0.454. Option number two is for a light zone glass unit that we intend to get Passive House certified for the cold climate zone that's using suspended films. Now it doesn't do as good as option number one, but it still has pretty good performance with a center of glass U value less than 0 0.5 and a solar heat gain coefficient of uh, greater than 0 0.41, which gives it a passive house efficiency of uh, 0 0.83, which meets the requirements for the cold climate zone. The overall window U value is as low as 0 0.5. 0.546, which is uh, pretty good. So options number one and two are for the light zone high solar gain glass unit options. Options three, four, and five are for light zone glass units that have low solar heat gains. And so the, um, these low solar heat gain insulating glass units may be applicable when you have uh, a situation where you're not going to have any meaningful uh, solar gains anyways on your project. For example, uh, windows that may be on the north elevation. Or it could be where uh, you have a situation where, where you're trying to minimize your uh, heating loads, but also to minimize your cooling loads. Um, for example, like that home in Ontario that we uh, looked at earlier in the presentation where the uh, U-value is so low for the uh, glass units uh, that the amount of solar gain that would be available is not meaningful to the overall energy budget. And so uh, the strategy is to minimize the solar heat gain coefficient to uh, reduce your overall energy requirements to uh, such a small level, you still meet the passive house uh, uh, low energy uh, requirements, but you do so in a way that you don't have any risk of your project overheating in the summer. You avoid the cost of using shading devices or overhangs or other strategies to uh, minimize any potential overheating problem. And, uh, and uh, so using uh, item option number five, we can get a solar heat gain coefficient under uh, 0.16 and uh, that's with uh, an overall window U value as low as 0.368. So these low solar heat gain uh, light zone options may be applicable on your passive host project depending on what you're trying to achieve. As was mentioned earlier in the presentation, there are about a dozen window manufacturing companies that can uh, use thicker, higher performing light zone insulating glass units in their window framing systems, including both for fixed and operable windows. And some of those window systems are Passive House certified. Here's an example of a Quebec-based uh, manufacturer, Polar Maxima, that has developed a uh, fixed and operable window system <laughs> that can accept thicker light zone insulating glass, including 
uh, up to 4.4 inch thick light zone glass units as shown here in this example of uh, outswing operable window. They also have in-swing and tilt-turn operable windows and uh, Polar Maxima intends to get these windows Pacifo certified for the cold climate zone later this year. Some of those window manufacturers that can use light zone insulating glass also manufacture doors that can use light zone glass, including lift and slide doors or even man doors. Here's an example of a man door manufactured by Polar Maxima that is using a, uh, a light zone L0579 glass unit that's 3.6 inches thick. Polar Maxima also manufactures a lift and slide door that can use our light zone uh, 679 glass unit that's 4.4 inches thick. There are also curtain wall manufacturers that have designed systems to accept thicker, higher performing, and longer lasting light zone insulating glass units. Here's an example of a curtain wall project for a condominium being uh, constructed in St. Catharines, Ontario, that's using light zone glass units 3.6 inches thick. Here is another example of a curtain wall system that has been des designed to accept a thicker light zone glass unit. It uses a large polyamide thermal break to extend the face of the uh, curtain wall so that a 4.4 inch thick light zone glass unit can be used. This system was developed by Ferguson Corporation out of Calgary. Here's an idea of something we can do to dramatically improve the energy efficiency of the built environment. Many old buildings have old curtain walls on them, similar to what we see here on the left, where we have a one inch glass unit that may be getting as little as R2 center of glass in a non-thermally broken aluminum frame and in a spandrel area with not much, in not much insulation. Uh, so what we can do is uh, use an adapter with uh, a very large polyamide thermal break that's uh, connected between a, an aluminum profile on uh, this side and another aluminum profile on the outside to extend uh, this curtain wall out where we can then attach the pressure plate and cap that comes off of the existing system to make room for a thicker, higher performing uh, light zone glass unit and also use a insulated extender to move the spandrel glass out to make room for more insulation and perhaps we can put better insulation in the spandrel area to really make a remarkable improvement in the overall thermal performance of this wall. Uh, just looking at the glass area alone, if we have R17 light zone glass compared to the R2 glass unit in the old wall, that would uh, reduce the heat flow through this glass by nearly 90%. Here's another idea for how we can upgrade an old curtain wall to accept a thicker, higher performing light zone insulating glass unit. This curtain wall has a small thermal break in front uh, and a uh, glass pocket uh, designed to accept a one inch thick glass unit. Now the idea here is to reduce the daylight opening so that we can have room to inset the main part of the light zone glass unit back into the area where the back section is of the curtain wall. On the front, we use a piece of offset glass to extend into the glass pocket. And then in behind that glass, we use uh, an, uh, an insulated spacer that will maintain the mechanical connection at the front of the system. Then we use silicone sealant at the back to bond the glass to the aluminum and create an air seal at the back of the system. Uh, then we would use an al aluminum tube to act as a glass stop by fastening that tube to the back section. Now this won't do very much for the 
uh, thermal performance of the frame, but uh, the uh, dramatic improvement in the insulating value center of glass will uh, uh, significantly reduce energy losses through the uh, vision area of this curtain wall. This is the Overbrook Community Center in Ottawa that is being upgraded to use higher performing, thicker light zone glass units by the City of Ottawa using that offset glass detail shown in the previous slide. We have come to the end of this presentation. I hope you've been informed and intrigued about how thicker, higher performing, longer lasting light zone insulating glass can bring value to and help to optimize your energy efficient net zero or passive house project. Do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions about light zone insulating glass.